Welcome back to Best Practice, my video masterclass series where we learn the art of practicing and how to make progress faster. This week we're continuing with the vibrato series, my 15 ultimate tips for vibrato. Um, this is part three and I have four very practical tips for you today, so stay tuned. If you haven't already, do check out part one and two of this series because some of these tips can be combined to make even more powerful uh, practice methods. So here's tip number seven. This is a method that um, strengthens the coordination of your vibrato by uh, only focusing on one direction of the vibrato motion. We roughly have an up and a down motion. So this way you're able to isolate and sharpen the components of the vibrato motion. So the idea is that you move the wrist or hand, depending on which vibrato you're working on. Um, you move very quickly in one direction and very slowly in the other. So let's say our up motion is going to be fast and our down motion is going to be slow. So the exercise looks like this. The fast motion should happen as fast as possible and the slow motion should be immediately slow with no transition. The slow motion should also be at a constant speed, very even and not rushed. Likewise, keep your bow speed very constant and don't allow the actions of the left hand to influence the right hand. We can do this on each finger. And after perfecting this, we can do the opposite. So now the down motion will be fast and the up motion will be slow. Once you get good at this in a very slow tempo, you can start increasing the tempo. So the uh, fast and slow motions still stay fast and slow, but there are more of them coming. So. And it becomes more difficult to, to keep that contrast between fast and slow and not, for example, move kind of quickly in the beginning of the slow motion and then slow it down, right? You want that absolute zero to 60 and 60 to zero um, instantly. Tip number eight is a fun one. Basically, we're going to take the rhythm of any piece of music and we're going to mimic it using just the vibrato motion. So the more complex the rhythm of the piece, um, and you know how the notes are changing, the better it is and the more challenging it'll be for this exercise. So to take a very simple example, if I was to do uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, it would sound like this. You know, it's kind of repetitive, but basically we're, we're taking the rhythm of that piece and recreating it with the vibrato motion. So it just uh, injects variation into the vibrato exercise without having to kind of come up with these schemes of rhythm patterns. I'm going to do another example and whoever can guess which piece I'm mimicking here will get um, a free digital copy of my latest CD. So here we go.
Tip number nine involves counting the number of vibrato swings you're doing. And you can do two, three, four, five, six. I basically just add one at a time. So here's one. And two. etc. And after you get past 8, 9, maybe 10, at a certain point it's just vibrato. This is very good because you're gradually building the succession of these fast bursts. Um, and with tip number 7, you're training those muscles. So this is kind of a good thing to do after tip number 7. So it's kind of a, a different way to get to vibrato. One way, of course, is starting with a very slow and wide motion and then gradually tightening it and tightening it while staying relaxed. Um, so the opposite way is to do very uh, quick and sudden bursts, but very small ones, and then gradually uh, increase the size of those bursts so that you arrive at vibrato. So it's important to work at vibrato from different directions. Tip number 10 is for vibrating double stops. Um, double stops can be extra challenging to vibrate. It seems like the notes are never as beautiful as when you vibrate them individually. Um, so we can actually use that as a, a way to practice. So if we vibrate both voices of a double stop, but only bow one at a time, you get something like this. So for this one, and that sounds okay, but if I took the third finger off, it'd be much easier to get a full and uh, beautiful vibrato on that note. So the reason to practice this way is because your, your ear will think it's one note that you're vibrating and it'll demand that sort of best vibrato, best sound that you're typically capable of making on one note. So the ear is wondering, why doesn't this sound as beautiful as it could? So ultimately, it'll help guide you towards that beautiful sound. Part of practicing is uh, paying close attention to the physical sensations, but also being guided by your ear. And so we're kind of tricking our ear into uh, guiding us in this case. And you could do scales like this as well. So, another thing to do if you're going to practice double stop scales um, for vibrato purposes is to use different bowings because different bowings will reveal different things about your sound and how your left hand moves. Often we'll inadvertently use uh, bow changes to mask certain things in our playing. So if we get really used to one bowing and kind of even bowings in a bar, um, our brain will naturally use that as a way to, to hide certain things. One of the bowings I like to use is this offset slur bowing. So what it does is allow you to vibrate through a bow change on every single note instead of every other note. You can also use the scale to alternate between vibrato and non-vibrato. And this will really test your control of the motion. Try to make those changes between vibrato and non-vibrato very sudden and very clear. And at the same time, um, 
don't tense up your arm or your shoulder to make that happen. Right? That control lives in the wrist, in, in the loose fingers, and in the arm, however you're vibrating. As I mentioned before, a very powerful component of this work is to combine methods of practicing. So I encourage you to check out my part two of this series. Um, that's where I talk about the scroll support method of vibrato practice. And if you combine that with any of the uh, methods we just went over, you'll find that it sort of multiplies the results. That's all for this week. Uh, stay tuned for next time when we'll do part four of the vibrato series, and that will be the last one. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that one. And if you enjoy these videos, consider going over to my Patreon page where you can become a supporter of my work.